<laughs> Super leg. You got a problem with that? No, Sensei. No mercy. <laughs> Cobra Kai. Kidding. Bonsai, I'm the Cobra Kai Kid, and today I am joined by Callum Smith, who plays young Jacob in the brand new movie, A Taste of Love. How are you doing today, Callum? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. I want to thank you so much for coming on. So congratulations, first off, on the movie that um, just premiered at the Sunscreen Film Festival. You played young Jacob, who is the young version of uh Jesse Cove, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So yeah, I wanna I wanna just tell you you did an amazing job on that movie. And mm -hmm. of course, and for all the Cobra Kai fans out there, pretty cool. Martin Cove, who plays John Kreese on Cobra Kai, is in this film, along with Jesse Cove, who played varsity captain David in one of the episodes, and Susan Gallagher homeless slin so you have all these cobra kai actors in this film what, what was that like you know did you know when you first signed on for this movie that they were all going to be in it no not at all actually i had just got an audition for my agent for this movie called a taste of love uh, i didn't really know what it was yet i just knew that it was a love movie um between like two yeah like two adults and i just knew that i was going to be the younger version of one of the main love interests. And so I had recorded it, sent it in, and eventually I booked it. And already I was super excited because it was my first ever movie. It's the first ever movie I'd ever done and booked. And so I was excited for it already. But one day, maybe like a month later, we had gone to a dress rehearsal to like figure out what I'm gonna wear. And we had seen on like the wall, there were pictures and there was one that had Martin Cove on it. And it was like, he was getting dressed up for this movie too. And I was like, mom, is that a Martin Cove up there? And there's Jesse Cove and then there's uh, the homeless land. It was like, oh my God, there's, there's so many Cobra Kai actors. We were like, yeah, that's them. So that's, that's kind of how we figured out. And then eventually we had started filming. And I had gotten a scene done with Martin Cove, and it was just, like, magical. First ever scene done, it was with, like, one of the best actors of all time, honestly. So that was a, that was a surprise, but it was a good one because I didn't see that coming at all. That's so cool. So so you actually knew him as Martin Cove. Like, you, didn't, you knew him as John Kreese, but you knew the actor, too. Yeah, I knew um, he was John Kreese because... When I was younger, I was a huge fan of Karate Kid. Mm. And I watched like the first season of Cobra Kai. So when when I saw he was in there, I was like, yeah, that's that's him. And I was just surprised. It was a big thing. Yeah. And as you mentioned, your very first scene was with him. And what, what was it? What was that like getting to film with him? So um, I had gone to the restaurant in the movie um where cc riders is what it's called and um it's like an actual place by the way the needed mm. and uh i had gone there i met jesse cove first he was um he was just kind of out there waiting to shoot for his other scene he was on set most of the time so i talked to him a few times but um i didn't really have a scene with him because it, it kind of be weird if the younger version and the older version were together but i did get to meet him but um, when we started filming, it was like it was magical. Like it felt like a it felt like a dream. It was surreal. Cause um, I've been wanting to act since I was like little, little, sorry, littler, like eight years old. And I never thought that my first thing would be with Martin Cove. So um, when we finished filming, I was like, oh my god. And I started watching Cobra Kai again because I was like, yep. Yeah, I was just so excited. Like, I didn't know what to do. It was just, it was such a fun experience. It was such a beautiful experience meeting such an amazing actor on my first scene in, in a movie that I never thought he would be in, you know? In like a, a, low, a lower budget, like romance, Hallmark type movie. I never thought I would see him in a movie like that. And it was just so, it was awesome. I loved it. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was it was so cool seeing like getting that announcement that he would be in it because yeah, like he's the the supportive father in this love story. Like you know, yeah. and it's like John Kreese, but he's so good, right? Oh yeah, he's. I never expected him to be a good actor for that type that type of stuff. He gets pretty emotional in a few scenes. Like he did really well in this movie. Um, it's not really his normal acting thing he would do he's usually like the fighter you know like he's the scary guy but it, he's really good at it he was um he had a few emotional scenes it was just really good yeah so as you mentioned your this was your your first big movie so seeing martin cove like you know i mean he, he's had a big career been in a bunch of movies and yeah, he, he could play the evil John Kreese and he could play you know, the sweet father in A Taste of Love. Does that inspire you to, um, as you continue your acting career, do you want to play those same sorts of diverse roles where you, maybe you play the nice guy, but then you play the villain? Like, would you want to do that too? Of course. I mean, when I first started acting, people would ask me, oh, what do you want to do? And I'd be like, oh, I love comedy, I love horror, I love action. I was like, I love everything. And so, like, all this stuff, I would be super happy playing. Uh, I would be grateful for any role I got, but, like, anything I would love to do. Because acting is just super fun doing, auditioning. Whenever I get an audition, I'm super excited to do it. And I like to get them done. And it's just, I I'll do any role. I love doing any roles. I, like I would like being the nice guy, the hero, the villain. All that stuff is great. All that stuff is fun. Definitely. So um, going back to A Taste of Love. So the movie premiered at the 2023 Sunscreen Film Festival in St. Petersburg, Florida. But uh, just to clarify for everyone out there watching, the movie has not yet been released to the public. So it's still looking for um, a, a place to have, like, like for a platform. A place yeah. to live, you know, for eternity, a platform for people to watch it on. Um, I got to watch the film, but I'm so excited for for people to watch it. So you talked um, a little bit about the film and what your role is. Uh, without giving any spoilers, any, anything else you could tell us about your character, young Jacob, and um, what this film is about? Yes. So my character is young Jacob the younger version of the lead character. And what I can say about him is he's a little bit of a troublemaker in what scenes I am in. He's, um, he's always, he was breaking the rules with this girl. Uh, he was stealing from this restaurant, you know, stuff like that. He's a very, he's a troublemaker in the beginning, but uh, when, as he gets older, it seems he gets a little bit, he's still a little bit, you know, mischievous and stuff. Not mischievous, but you know, he messes some things up but he tries to make him better in the movie. And um, that role as a character, it, it flows well in the romance thing, in the romance aspect, because you got the, you got the girl who's like, I don't know how much I can say about it, but the girl who's like famous for her hometown. And then you got the silly childhood friend who's still making mistakes as a grown adult. And, but they make up and they kind of, you know, it's just, it's nice. It's a nice movie. Everything about it just flows well. His character, they're like, they're like um, someone switches up, like the girl, she becomes this famous thing that he probably wouldn't have gone otherwise. And then he's like just a childhood friend and they, they get together and it's just, it's beautiful. It's like how two things can come together even if they have their differences. And that's kind of what the movie's about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, your your scenes without yeah without giving anything away, your scenes uh, show that connection with you and uh, Taylor. And um, basically, then yeah, you see as they get older, they go on their separate ways, and then when they reunite, you know, things have changed. They've both kind of moved on with their lives, but um, ultimately, it's it's cooking and the restaurant that that brings them together, which is so beautiful. And you, you, you said that the restaurant, it's a real restaurant in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the film was shot in Dunedin. I know you know that, but, um, yeah, the film was shot in a very pretty place called Dunedin 
it's like I was actually born in Dunedin, so it was oh, like another cool. roundabout thing. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, it's it is a real restaurant. It's called CC Riders. They had like temporarily closed it down just so we could film it, film mm. those scenes in there. And but the thing is, like we used to go, like it was really like a full circle because we used to go to that restaurant a lot. And then I'm like filming in there. Oh, you went before you yeah. filmed? Yeah, like when I was younger, we would go. Oh to my god! Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was like a real roundabout thing. So. What, do you do you know if this film was based on a true story? No, I don't think it is. But um, I mean, there's probably stories like it, obviously. But like, mm. um, no, it's not really based off anything. But they did use that restaurant for the movie. And I'm assuming the the character names, because Ryder is their last name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. I didn't even think about that. CC Riders. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that makes sense. It's pretty, pretty cool. So what do you think it, it is about this film in particular that um, when people watch it, what do you think they'll resonate with and why do you think they'll enjoy it? I think people will enjoy this movie. One, because, I mean, if they enjoy Cobra Kai, they'll love seeing, you know, Martin Cove, Homeless Land all of that stuff, but um, the story, the love story, it can resonate with people, it can inspire people. I think that the love story is just really well done, and you feel that like this stuff could happen in real life, like it's two real people who are really connecting after a long time. It feels super real, it doesn't really feel all like cartoonish, like it feels like a real thing. And I think that would re people would really connect to that. And then obviously on top of that, there's, you know, Cobra Kai, Jesse Cove, stuff like that. I think people would really connect to the movie because of that. Yeah. So obviously my introduction to this film was through the Cobra Kai guys, uh, you know, Jesse, Martin, and Susan. But I did end up really enjoying the film. And now because of that, I'm able to talk to you, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and again, that experience of finding out that they were in it was crazy, and I can't even really imagine what it'd be like for you, like a huge Cobra Kai fan, yeah, finding out that these actors are in this movie. Oh, it's it, just, um, that'd be crazy, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it was so cool, especially like you know, I mean, did I have to ask, you know, you know, uh, Susan Gallagher, Homeless Slynn. Uh, you you saw her on Cobra Kai. Did you recognize her without all the the makeup and the messy hair and all that? That's a good question. So actually, um, in the movie, you know how they go to that birthday party or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like at that, we had done a table read, um, at that place. A table read being like where you practice the lines with the other actors. And um, we had met her, and we thought it was just someone working there. Like she didn't look the same. So we thought it was someone working there, but then she was, she was super nice. She was like, Hey, I'm Susan Gallagher. She like introduced herself. And I was like, Oh yeah, it's homeless. Slim. Like we didn't even recognize her in the show. She's all messy haired <laughs> and like dirty but in real life. She's just, yeah, she's just a person. And so we didn't even recognize her at first, but um, yeah, she, she was really nice. She introduced herself and um, I'd also met her again at the, AMC Film Festival premiere. Uh, but she's a really nice person. Same with Martin Cove and Jesse Cove. All of them are really like nice people. So that that was a really nice experience meeting all of them. Yeah, they all on Cobra Kai, they all play these uh very different characters than they are in a taste of love, which is why it's such a refreshing movie. It's cool to see a different aspect to them. Yeah, maybe like there's like five seasons of Cobra Kai, right? Yeah. Five. So having like all these five seasons of Cobra Kai, having Homeless Lynn, um, John Kreese, you know, it, it can be a little refreshing to see them in a new take, like a new thing, like a love story. You you normally won't see them in that, but it's refreshing. It's it's different and it's new, and that that was another interesting part about the movie. 
Yeah. And now they got to get you on Cobra Kai, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to have to get me in there now. I'm with all these other actors. Got to get me in there. <laughs> would you Would you want to do that? Oh, oh, of course, yeah. If they asked me to get on Cobra Kai, I, I would be on there right as soon as possible. I'd be in season six if I could. I'd be in any season. Yeah. So, okay, let's say you're in Cobra Kai, what would you want your role to be? If you could have any role on the show, you can make it up. All right. Um, <laughs> I would be, I would be a kid who does not know karate yet, but is kind of like Miguel, you know, I, I kind of want to be like him the way he was like bullied or treated, but then I slowly became better at karate and then kind of just, you know, I got better than lots of other people and I could like protect myself. I want to be like that. I would want to kind of slowly develop like he did in season one. Really, he got a lot better in season one. So yeah. kind of like that, I'd be that character. That would be cool. I'm, I'm my yeah. fingers are crossed. I'm hoping that for you. Oh, yeah, that would be super cool. Yeah. <laughs> Cobra def- Kai would be great. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And there's, you know, even if it's not the Cobra Kai series, they're going to make a bunch of more movies and shows in the Cobra Kai universe. So maybe you could get in there, maybe with with Martin Cove again. Yeah, I'll get to meet Martin Cove again. Again, yeah. It'll be like a career field of Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, So you talked about um a little about how you got your role as young Jacob, uh, the casting process. Did you send in a tape? Did you uh, do a scene? How did the audition work? So the way most auditions work nowadays, it's not really like you, it, they do sometimes, but it's not like you go in person into a room and then you audition with a director or a casting director. Um, Often now they'll do what's called a self tape where you like set up the camera, you know, and just kind of record. And what we had to do for the movie is we had to do two scenes. One was um the scene in the restaurant and the other, you know, the, the two scenes I was in, I had to do those two for the audition. So yeah, I just really had to memorize the lines and um do those two scenes. And that's really how I got the movie. It's not really like you go in person for much anymore, you know. Okay. So was there a callback or did you actually get the role right from that self-tape? Um, there was I did the self-tape, then there was a callback through Zoom where I had to do the scene again in front of the casting directors. Mm. And then that's really how you that's after that I had booked it. And that's how I got the role. That's how most things work nowadays. Unless you're like super remarkable on the first audition, they just take you right away. That's pretty rare. That's yeah. what. That's really cool. So can you talk about this? So this was your first movie. So what was like the the vibe on, on set? Like with the crew and the cast? Like was everyone very friendly? Did you meet a lot of different people? Um, everyone, first of all, is very friendly. I mean, all of them, everyone in the movie are very experienced actors. So they, they kind of know the flow. Um, Martin and Jesse are all very laid back. Like when they do their work, they aren't like frantic or anything. They just kind of laid back and do their job. They're not like, I don't know about on Cobra Kai, but I know on this (laughs) movie that they're laid back and they kind of just do it they're just they're way more experienced than i am so you can see how they're more they just do things quicker and then kind of know what they're doing they just kind of flow with it Mm. um the mood on set everyone was very friendly um even the people who didn't really have a part in the movie like backstage people i gotta shout out the directors like comrade was one of the directors for the movie he's a very nice guy um Backstage people, like lighting people, were very nice. Um, yeah, everyone was very friendly and easy to work with. And that kind of just made this movie flow quickly. Because we had to, 
we had to film the entire movie in like 15 days or something like that. The whole movie? Yeah, whole movie. We had done it in 15 days. Wow. Which, that is not normal. Normally, movies get like months, yeah. sometimes years even to film. And um, so it was a little different for all of us, but hmm. what we had put together was, it was really good, especially for the amount of time we had. I only had two days that I shot, so I can only imagine, like, Jesse, he had to do lots of scenes, and, um, yeah, so he had a lot of stuff to do. We all had a lot of work to do in a short amount of time, but it was very efficient. Everyone was friendly, so it just kind of happened. It kind of just came together quick. Wow. Yeah, that that is not a lot of time to film a big no. – it's, like it's like an hour and a half movie, right? Hour and a half, yeah. Oof. Man, that must have been a lot of work. It was. And I was only in a few scenes, but um, I'm pretty sure the first scene took like five or six hours. Like just the first scene. In the restaurant? That I'm in. Yeah. That took about like five hours. They packed like a lot of stuff in a one day. Probably especially for that scene though, because it was the opening so they probably put more time into that, but it was it was done really well and efficiently for the amount of time given, which I got to give credit to like the directors and stuff too, because that's that's a tough job. That's tough. Yeah. So I'm curious for a scene like that. You know, you're talking about the opening scene in the restaurant with uh, you, Martin Coves in it. So, like, what if it's taking five hours? What would you say is like? What is taking up most of that time? Why is it taking that much time? So really, people don't really know this most of the time, but like people think that most of the time they're just doing takes over and over again, and sometimes that's true. But um, what takes the most time is behind the scenes, the lighting, the camera angles. They have to put tape on the ground for the spots you have to be in mm -hmm. for the scenes. Um, that takes up a lot of the time. And I remember we had to wait a couple hours for the kitchen to be, like, set up because they just had to put everything in place. And that takes a while, like, pre like pre-production and um, behind-the-scenes stuff. It's crazy, man. Like, they, you may not notice it when you're watching it, but, like, if you pause, they put a lot of work in the lighting and little details. And that's another magical thing about the movie. They just kind of set things up well. Everything was done well with the budget and the time, the lighting, all of that stuff. It takes up most of the time. Yeah. And and that kitchen, like, I mean, you have, you mentioned you, there's so much crew on set. Like, did it feel kind of crammed in there? Did you have enough space to do everything? I mean, the thing is we had space. We kind of had our own little, we had our own little, like, walkway to go through. But all around us, there's lights, there's cameras. Um, the grandma who's talking behind the camera, she's behind like a stack of trays and carts mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, so we really had to use that space wisely. Yeah. Wow. And what what was that like? It, you, being that it's your first movie, like this isn't just one camera in front of you. You have like, you know, so many people with multiple cameras, multiple lights, all on you. Were you nervous? Were you excited? How did you feel? Everyone experiences this whenever they film a movie, but I feel like especially the first time, it can be very nerve-wracking. I remember being beyond nervous to film, especially when I found out about um, Cobra Kai actors. I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> like, this is going to be tough. I'm going to be acting around Martin Cove. And, but they're so nice and so friendly. It's just kind of easy to do around them. But I was very excited, too. But I was mostly nervous. I remember my heart like being like crazy. But I think it turned out well, even though I was like super nervous. It turned out really well. Yeah, it, it really did. Was there ever a moment on set where like the nerves like started to go away? Did you find maybe talking to people or something in particular? There was a point where um, when Martin Co was like pushing back down like hot dogs or something, yeah. or, uh, he's in a blanket. I remember um. When we were kind of behind the camera, we could, like, steal one and eat one. 
and that kind of made me feel a little more comfortable because this is it's a production, but it's also like. I felt I just started feeling a little more comfortable around that point around these other people because they they can improvise fast. If I mess up, they can just kind of get back right to it. And um, yeah, I, I was really nervous, but once I kind of started, we started filming. I realized that it was going together really well, and so I kind of just did my part, and it turned out really well. So I'm, I'm glad about that. But by that point, I wasn't really nervous anymore. That's great. And did any of the Cobra Kai actors maybe give you any advice or words of wisdom on set? Like, here's the thing. It was two years ago at this point when I filmed. So oh, it's wow. been a while. Yeah. yeah, but um, they didn't really give me words, but I do remember being inspired by them based on just how quickly and efficiently they worked. I know I've said that a lot, but like, they're just really good at just getting work done. They're just more experienced. Like Martin Cove, he's been acting for since like the 80s or something. Like, yeah. But even before that, he's been acting for a while. So I knew what he was doing. I was just hoping that one day I could be like him. I could just like get my work done without being too nervous, knowing that I'm in a comfortable environment. It's not like these people are going to yell at me if I mess up. I just hope that one day I can be as good as actors as them. And that I can be as comfortable filming and not all nervous. Yeah, definitely. You, 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 you will. I mean, you did such a great job in this film, such such a cool first movie. So, um, yeah, definitely. And that is crazy that you filmed two years ago, um, and now the movie, like you just had the the premiere. So, what's it been like? You know, filming the movie two years ago, kind of moving on with your life. And then revisiting this project again. That was, it was amazing finally seeing it after such a long wait. But I will have to say, um, between productions, a few of my friends had known that I had like filmed the movie. And it, it sometimes it got irritating when they were like, when's it coming out? When's it coming <laughs> out? I want to see it. But um, it finally came out after a couple years. And when it finally came out, it was like, it was just my moment. Like I just felt, like the beginning, I was so excited. Like I, I had a smile on my face the whole time. But between that time, I was always excited for the project to come out. I was still acting, I was still auditioning for things. And I was excited to see like my first acting role. That was really how I was feeling. I was really excited for the upcoming project that was gonna come out. Yeah, and so it just premiered recently at the the sunscreen film festival so what was it like was that like your first ever film festival red carpet event yes so this is a fun story um when we had gotten there um there were a bunch of short films that were premiering so we had sat down and watched all of those and then we had walked out and we were so, I was so scared to be walking down the red carpet because there were a bunch of people taking pictures and stuff. But then I realized we had a while to wait. We had like a little while to wait. So we had gotten upstairs and there's like a VIP place. And all the Cobra Kai actors were up there. All the Taste of Love movie actors were up there. There was um Cobra Kai actors I'm trying to had a brain fart there. <laughs> Jesse Cove, Martin Cove. And um Susan. Susan, sorry. No, no worries. Thank you. Um and Susan was super nice. We had ran into her like she was getting something and we had met her again there. I had talked to Jesse and then um the girl I worked with on set, I had met up with her again. Uh I haven't seen her since we filmed last, so it was it was fun to see all of them again. But um, finally walking down the red carpet, I felt like I was, I felt like I was in a different world for a little bit. I was, cause I'm a kid, like I love acting, but most of the time I'm either like playing games or watching shows. So being in front of cameras and lights again, like a little bit overwhelming, but it was actually super fun once I kind of got used to it because the actors were on there. I got pictures with Jesse Cove and Martin Cove and Susan 
and that was super fun. It's super memorable, memorable experience, and I will never forget it. It was like probably one of the biggest highlights of my life. It's just my first movie. Yeah, that must have been pretty, pretty surreal, pretty crazy. Yeah, it it was. It was. It was almost like when I was filming times two, because it was like there were like a crowd of people. Like um, I was about to do a live performance or something. <laughs> there were a ton of people back there taking their own pictures. But um, it was really fun. It was a really fun time. I don't go out like a ton, so going out and doing something big like that is super cool. And one of my friends was in the other theaters, apparently. Like he had bought a ticket, which is super cool. So one of my friends got to see it. And it was just a super fun experience. I went with my family, and we all got to watch it. It was just one of the best things of my life. Yeah, it's your all your hard work and those those two years of waiting now finally paying off, right? It's like that big yeah. that big moment of like this is what all that work was for. Now you get to just celebrate it. Mhm. That's really what that day was. There was an after party afterwards, but it was like ten o'clock. I was mm. I was so tired. I don't know how um, <laughs> the rest of the actors could keep going, but you know, it was super fun. Yeah, those events could be very draining. They could be they could be a lot. Yeah. Um, so what was it like getting to watch yourself on on screen for the premiere? Do you some actors, you know, when they watch themselves, sometimes they don't like to watch themselves, sometimes they do. Like, how did you feel seeing yourself up there and you know, seeing everyone else watching you? Wow, it was it was amazing because there were we were in a theater with all the actors. There are two other theaters with just people watching it, but I was in the theater with all the actors, and it was it was like the most surreal part of that event because I could hear myself on this huge screen. I love watching movies, and like I've gone to this movie theater a lot, the AMC theater, and um, it was so surreal, like looking up and seeing myself up there. But honestly, I thought I would be cringed by it, like seeing myself up there. But I was super, it was super exciting. Like, I never really seen myself so publicly viewed, like by a bunch of people. And that was, that was pretty fun. It was pretty amazing. Yeah, that's great. And did you like, you know, because obviously you're in this theater with a bunch of people. Did you maybe like peer over, look and see if any, like how people were reacting? Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, of course martin cove and um jesse and susan were all sitting kind of like right here in front of me yeah kind of like right in front of me so i would look over and they were like smiling and i was like yeah that, that felt good yeah yeah and so funny so was... what were you saying Sorry, go. i was nothing going go yeah. oh no i was just gonna say um there there was um i don't know if you're familiar with the Karate Kid did a musical. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. But, um, <laughs> that'd be funny, actually, it's actually pretty good. So uh, it was in uh, St. Louis. They had the musical and basically they did a couple of shows uh, or they did shows for about a month. And if it, if it um, now basically the goal is to get that musical to Broadway. So that's the goal with that musical. But it's funny because um, I bring that up because I was there watching the musical and Martin Cove was there. And I, and I, Ooh. yeah, so he was seeing this Karate Kid musical. Um, and, you know, I was watching the musical, but I kept looking at him just to see, like, you know, his reaction to, like, what was there. And, you know, he was standing up and applauding. And I was like, it's pretty, pretty cool seeing him react to that, you know? Yeah, that'd be cool if like a taste of love out of play, and I was like, oh, that that kid's playing me or something like that, you know. <laughs> that if if the musical was adapted from a movie, it's just always fun to watch for me. Like every everything gets a musical, even like SpongeBob got a musical or something. Yeah. And seeing that stuff, it's so much different from the movie. But I'm glad he I'm glad he enjoyed that. That's <laughs> a taste of love, the musical. Yeah. That'd be cool if that happened. That'd are, be different. Are you into music? Do you sing or play any instruments? 
Um, I'm in chorus. Cool. Um, and I love chorus. It's not just I'm forced to be in there or anything. I really like doing it. Uh, we had a concert not too long ago. I play. I very. I know very little of keyboard or piano, and um, guitar. I know a little bit of that. But I don't really play them like, like I'm not amazingly good at it. I just like doing it sometimes. But I like singing a lot. That's great. So taste of love the musical. They could just get you to play young Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or I could be playing piano behind the scenes. Who knows? There you go. Yeah. So what did you do to um, actually prepare for the role of young Jacob? I remember being at home and um, before we had filmed, I was super nervous because I kept looking over the lines and stuff. And I was super excited because I'd be acting with all these actors. But um, I looked over it like OCD, like like I looked over, I tried perfecting every line. I was like, all right, here, 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 here. I was looking over it like all day. I was making sure that I did it right and well. And I'm glad it paid off because it was it was good. But um, leading up to it, that's really how I prepared for it. I just really looked over the lines like every day. And once we got to that day, I was nervous but very excited to finally do it after all that practice. And you were prepared, right? Yeah, prepared. Yeah. Yeah. That was what that was what was nice about it. It wasn't like I messed up a million times because I practiced enough so that I had all the lines in there, and uh, I did them how they wanted me to. Of course, they wanted me to say some of them differently, but um, I think it really paid off. Yeah, you were, you, were, you were so prepared that when there had to be a change, like you were, you were able to do that, right? Yeah, I was able to do that, because I, I practiced it in many different ways, because I knew they would change it somehow. So I would practice it in different tones, like looking different ways or something. Mm. stuff like that yeah so okay so when you're practicing i'm sure you're you're practicing in a bunch of different ways but when you get the set and you know before the director actually instructs you on what to do and you're just like or maybe they give you a little bit of direction are you in the moment are you just feeling the scene out so you're not really thinking about like what do i say what do i do it's kind of it just comes naturally that really depends on line memorization, but um, when I did the movie, I was kind of in the moment. I was trying to get in the character as best as I could. Sometimes I would panic and be like, the line, the yeah. line. I just make sure I was doing it right, but um, most of the time, I kind of just went with the scene, and you just kind of need a lot of practice for that to work out when on set and live, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So A Taste of Love is a movie all about food. That's, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a bunch of lessons to the movie, but it all centers around food and cooking. So I'm curious, what is your favorite food of all time to eat? <laughs> That's tough, but I, I know definitely my favorite type of food. Yeah. Which is um, Mexican food. I love it. It just has so many different, um, like, ingredients. You know, there's like, I just love rice and beans. Like that's like my favorite thing of all time. I love getting Chipotle because of that. <laughs> because they have, a, they have. Um, I usually just get a bunch of rice and then a bunch of beans, guacamole, lettuce, and corn. I get like a bunch of it, and I love that. It's like my favorite meal of all time. Yeah, very healthy. Yeah, it is healthy and veggie. I'm not vegetarian, but I don't like the chicken from Chipotle, so I never get it. Uh, okay and have you ever done any cooking or is that something you're interested in i'm interested in cooking and when i do it well i really love it but what i'm really only good at is you know like putting water on the stove <laughs> but i would like to learn how to like cook well like make real dishes and meals mm -hmm. and a lot of the stuff from the taste of love does actually look really good like um the dessert they make yeah that's different but um i love food i eat it in some capacity 
because I don't want to get, you know, but I do love you. Yeah, I it's funny because after watching that movie, because there's so many scenes of just cooking and like bringing the food to life. And that's such a big focus. I was like, man, I think I want to start getting into that. Like, it, it seems fun. The most fun thing for me about cooking is when it's like very healthy and like natural instead of getting here's an example like getting strawberries from a farm rather than getting them from like walmart or Publix or something Mm. like that because i love i do this with my friends sometimes i'll go like to a strawberry field or blueberries or raspberries anything like that and i just love um picking like normal strawberries because they taste way better than the ones in the stores and I love when you get like the most natural ingredients and like use them to make a smoothie, um, some type of dish. Like I just love doing that. It just feels, it feels good to do because it's not like you're having stuff with a bunch of stuff on it. Like the things in stores, like the strawberries, they put on like coats of stuff that make it look consistent or something. It's just, I like having that natural stuff. They actually do that in the movie at one point. They go to like a farm and they get a bunch of natural stuff and yeah, yeah, stuff like that. That's your, that's your character. Older older Jacob is the one with the farm, which is pretty cool. So you relate to him in that sense. Uh huh. Of course. And um, I've only done that a few times, but it's one of my favorite things to do. Just getting like natural fruit. It just tastes amazing. That's that's awesome. Yeah, so Mexican food's your favorite. So now when you learn how to cook, you can make the best Mexican food. Yeah. <laughs> and if I'm feeling lazy and don't feel like cooking, I can just, you know. Order Chipotle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, you said you filmed for two days on Taste of Love. Must have been a very busy two days. But did you have one particular moment like – from behind the scenes on set that was your favorite when i'm not filming or like or when you when you when you were on set but like when the cameras were off and you weren't filming was there a fun behind the scenes moment that you remember i do remember um do you know what a stand-in is a stand-in like um okay, yeah, yeah you could tell everyone for the audience who who doesn't know what it is you could explain what that is um, so basically it's like someone who will look exactly like you, not exactly, but who have similar, like, they look like you, they'll have them come out to test the lights on them and, um, or use them or use them if like, you're not able to make it to a scene. And, um, I'm, I had become friends with these two and we were just talking about these two stand-ins and we were just talking about like shows we like, like they both like. Um, I forget what the show's called, but it's this Disney Plus show. We both liked it. And so we just kind of became friends. And then I finally saw them again at the premiere. That was one moment I remember. And another funny one was, um, when I was behind the scenes, like when they were preparing for scene two, I was actually starting to learn Spanish. I, like I was bored. So I downloaded <laughs> Kahoot and I just started learning Spanish. All of a sudden, I just wanted to all of a sudden. Well, um, those are two things I remember. Oh, so. cool. So just learning Spanish for fun. Yeah. I, I was just like, why not? One day, one day maybe I'll go to like Spain or something. I was like, well, you ne- you never not? know. You never know when those, those skills might come in handy. That's true. That's, I didn't think about that. You can put that stuff on your, um, resume. Yeah. Yeah, they need a role where someone knows how to speak Spanish. Boom, there you go. Uh, my mom does this stuff a lot. She'll like put like, oh, he knows how to play basketball. He knows how to do guitar, piano, speak with accents, stuff like that. It's really good for your resume. And just having this movie on there is going to help a lot, especially when it says Martin Cove. Like that's, that's going to help in a movie with Martin Cove. That's going to help a lot. Yeah, because especially, um, you know, Martin Cove isn't going to just work on any movie. He's not going to just say, yeah, let's no. just do it, whatever. Like, he's very, yeah, he he's made a name for himself. So uh, 
it's very important that what he associates himself with is a good project. And have you heard him like, I've seen a lot of interviews with him recently where he just gushes over the movie. He loves this movie. Have you seen those interviews? Yeah, I've seen those interviews in, um, at the premiere in like the special room where like only really the actors were in. They did a Q and A, and it was Jesse and Martin, and they were they were asked about the movie and how they liked the location of the meeting. And Martin Cove was like, he just loved it. He said he loved filming the movie. It was like a breath of fresh air for him after like a ton of Cobra Kai. And um, he just really, he said he really loved the location and loved filming it because it's really such like a casual movie. It's such like a, it's not like fight choreography. It's really just the acting that's important in this. And he had said that he thought it was just really nice and it was in a really nice location. Um, and that was interesting. It was like the interviews came to life or something. He really loved the movie and the location in this place. Yeah, it was a very sweet, heartfelt movie that just, it just puts a smile on your face the whole time. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And uh, even in the parts, I had thought I would be like, oh, only my part is what I'm going to care about. Like, that's my part. That's <laughs> what I want to see. But after my part, I was like, I, I was really entertained by the movie. It was um because it was just well done and it was easy to keep watching. Like, I, I didn't feel the urge to like, I mean, I couldn't anyway, but I didn't feel the urge to like go on my phone or something because it was just entertaining seeing the actors all together. And uh, the story, all of it, it was just so entertaining and fun to watch. Yeah, definitely. So what made you want to become an actor in the first place? I'm trying to remember. Well, I know I was inspired by Tom Holland. I really like his style of acting, and I really love the Spider-Man movies. I just think he's a really great actor. But um, the way I became an actor is different. It's because already I really wanted to act, but my dad was like, eh, no, I just kind of want you to, you know, he didn't want acting to be a huge thing. But eventually, it's a really weird story, but my sister was getting, like, senior high school photos by this guy, Michael Risher, and he had told me behind the camera after he was done um, shooting pictures for my sister, he had told me that I had really good potential just with the way, like, I interacted with people and the way I looked. And so eventually I had done a photo shoot with him. Like, he had took photos for me, and I just kind of put it on. We had made a little web page with the photos just so I could get myself out there a little bit. And then I also made an Instagram. And, um... At one point, I had done a few commercials. Um, like I got with an agency. Um, one's called Professionally Pretty, and the other's called Ben's Acting Studio, I think. And I had done a few commercials. I'd done a few photo shoots for this company called Black Dog. And then, um, after that, I had just eventually gotten this audition from my from the acting studio um, Ben's, and then I auditioned for The Taste of Love, and I got it, and that's just kind of how it happened. It just kind of happened so quick, and um, eventually I got up with one of the best agencies in the world, actually, mm. um, AEFH. I don't really remember what it stands for honestly but it's um it's called AFH they've done some really big movies and so I'm getting like bigger auditions there's more but the thing is I need a little more experience to get these huge things for like because I get lead auditions I just need some more experience for some of them I got a little sidetracked there but no that was um, great that was I think you set up the story perfectly of how how you started and so so taste of love is your first movie and uh this is something that you want to keep pursuing with right the acting of course yeah 
Yeah. And I mean, I've been wanting to do it for like a long time. When I see people up on the screen, I'll be like, I want to do that. Like, that's what I want to do. I don't want to be like a McDonald's worker or something. I don't want to, I just want to do something fun and cool. And eventually I was able to do that. And it felt like it was just like meant to happen. It happened so quick. And um, a guy who had gotten me started, he's really nice. He got me a few photo shoots at the start. And I, after all this, after all the amazing thing that's happening now, like getting in a movie with Taste of Love with Martin Cove, there's like, there's no way I can drop it now. And I love doing it. I just can't drop it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So now you keep sending in self tapes. Uh, do you do, uh, is it, do you use backstage actors access? Is it through there or is it through your agent? We, we um, it's a little weird how they do it, but we send in auditions, self tapes through um, actors access or backstage based on what it got sent through. Like we send it to my agent and then we submit it so that um, the casting directors can see it. And with like really big ones, you have to send it to the agent. And if they want to change things, they send it back. That's happened before for a huge movie I auditioned for. And um, yeah, stuff like that. Very recently I had this huge audition and stuff like that. If I get that, like that's crazy. That's insane. Mm. I definitely can't say what it is, but it's just amazing getting auditions. And with this new studio, it, it can be tough to get these auditions because they are like big rules. But um, stuff like that just makes you want to keep going because I know one of them will stick and I'll get something big. And I'm really excited for that. Yeah, you just got to gotta keep working, keep putting yourself out there. And definitely you, you got a great first project in the taste of love. So there you go. Yeah, it's like I got my own starter pack when I, like I just started and I got my own little boost just yeah. to kind of get me out there. Yeah. So, so now that you were in a taste of love and you are uh, continuing to um, pursue acting, how do your friends and family feel about that now? My friends think it's really cool. Like most of the school knows about it now. At this point, after the movie came out. And um, all my friend, all my friends think it's super amazing. My family thinks it's crazy what I'm doing, like <laughs> just how quickly things have happened, you know. And um, it's just amazing everything that's happened. But um, yeah, I I can I'm gonna continue to pursue it. And everyone everyone's fine with that. I think everyone thinks it's cool, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. And I'm going to try to get as big as I can and just do what I love, you know? Yeah. And outside of acting, like, what are some of your other favorite hobbies or activities to do? Um, I love reading. Not many people like mm. reading anymore. But I, I love reading books, especially, like, big ones. Because they'll, they're way more developed, you know? Yeah. And so I love reading books. Um. I love playing video games. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> um, I love watching movies and TV, obviously. I love singing. Um, I do drawing for fun. It's not really like a huge thing, but sometimes I draw. Um, stuff like that. And then acting is like my biggest hobby, obviously. Yeah. So I know you also have a YouTube channel. Callum Smith, kid actor on acting, right? Where you post yeah. uh, a bunch of videos on uh, movies and you give some reviews. Can you talk about the YouTube channel, how that came to be and what kind of videos you post on there? Okay, so my kid actor on acting channel was created after I felt like I should do like more things than just – um. Like, sometimes I'll do monologues, you know, but we felt like I should do more things that will really help make me an actor. And we felt like doing this YouTube channel, and you know, YouTube is like the biggest platform ever at this point. And doing YouTube was a way for us to kind of 
get more content out here when I'm not doing some production. So my mama came up with that idea. I had posted like my first video. And you know, of course not many people see them, but it's it's really fun just analyzing movies, watching movies. And that's really what I what I do on there. I review movies, I'll react to trailers sometimes. I've done monologues on there, I've done impressions on there. I've done lots of things, and only more is to come, so I'm excited to see what we cook up on that. Yeah, I have it linked in the description below, so everyone yeah. go check it out. Check out the channel and expect some new content, right? Oh, oh yeah, of course. I'm going to start posting. Great. And um, yeah, I'm just expecting more of that stuff, more reviews and trailers and stuff like that, you know expect more of that stuff so if you like that then click the link and subscribe i love that kid actor on acting so you're basically like yeah you're an actor giving your review on the acting and the the movies the shows pretty cool mm -hmm. and it's really fun too just doing youtube i've always loved youtube and just making videos and stuff so doing that it's pretty fun yeah and i also read online that you're into directing so how did your love for directing come to be? That's that's also a fun story. I mean, I've loved doing little short films, like on my mom's phone. Like, I have a phone now, but um, when I was younger, I would do, like, on my mom's phone, I'd just get, like, my stuffed animals and stuff, and I'd just, like, make little stories, and I would set things up for – I would set up these little things to happen – I set up lighting here. I create a little story, right? Like, very rough scripts. It was very improvised, of course. But um, I loved just making something and feeling the payoff when it finally comes together and just seeing a bigger project come together. It's just, it's a great feeling. I love that feeling. And that's really how my love of directing and little kind of making little shorts came to be. I love that because I I did like the same thing when I was growing up. You know, use my mom's oh. phone. Yeah, to like you know, we would me and like my friend we would do like we would record ourselves doing like lightsaber fights with our toys. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, and I've seen those videos on your channel that are like little skits and stuff. You know, like. Cobra Kai zombies or something I saw. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you saw that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, and that's why it was so fun. What, what was that? I said all that stuff is fun. Uh, but yeah, you can. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I still, you know, I was doing it when I was a kid, and I still love doing it to this day. And uh, you just you just grow and you get better and um, – you learn different things. So I love, yeah, doing those, those skits and, you know, playing different characters. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of fun. So. Mm -hmm. And if it's a solo production, it can be even more like payoff. Cause like, this is all you, you made all this, you set all this up doing skits too. I love doing those. I went to this little filming camp where we made like this short, um, a short, um at the tampa bay film festival i mean not film festival film camp and uh that was super fun i'm definitely going to do it again this year and that was another thing that wanted me to keep going because keep acting because it's just so fun um just watching things that you've made and like i just love that i love that feeling. yeah can we expect any of the short films on the youtube channel in the near future maybe Maybe, yeah. You can actually see um, the short film that I had made on this channel called the Tampa Bay Film Camp mm. channel. And, um, yeah, we made this little like horror short there. And um, yeah, you guys can look it up if you want to. It's just like this fun little short. I made it like a year ago. But yeah, it was one of, a highlight of acting too. Just going to film camps was super fun. That's cool. Everyone will have to check that out. So yeah. what TV shows and movies? You talked about Tom Holland, Spider-Man. Um, 
what else inspired you for acting and also directing what shows or movies? Um, well, of course, I like Cobra Kai. I like um, Stranger Things. I like, I like, um, do you know what Gravity Falls is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite shows. Stuff like that. Um, I love Gravity Falls just because it's funny. I think Stranger Things is really well done and directed. Um, the acting, a lot of the actors, like Finn Wolfhard, people like them and Stranger Things really inspired me. Um, when I first watched Karate Kid, um, the main character, he inspired me a lot. I, I just love that movie. Like, that's one of my favorite movies. So, um, yeah, he inspired me a lot. And I'm trying to think what else. Those were really the main things. Stranger Things and um, Marvel stuff was really what got me going. That's really... And I also like older movies, like um, Paul Newman movies, you know? Mm-hmm. I like those a lot because they're very like well acted and they feel really real. Uh, those inspire me a lot, being in like those really real and serious movies, stuff like that. I really love all those movies and shows, and they help me get to where I am today. Yeah, I like I like your taste. No pun intended. Yeah. Taste of love. <laughs> taste of love yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Cobra Kai, Karate Kid. You're a fan. You're a fan. I want to know, what is it about the show that drew you in? How big of a fan are you? So I'm not your fan level. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a very casual enjoyer, but um, what really drew me in with Cobra Kai was the story. It was like, it just wanted me, I wouldn't even know what was going to happen next because Miguel, he's always getting bullied in the first season. I wanted, I knew he would learn karate, and I wanted to see how that turned out. Stuff like that really wanted me to keep going. I wanted to see Johnny. That's his name, right? Yeah. Johnny. Just make sure. Um, I wanted to see him get better because you know how he was like all messed up at the beginning, and I wanted to see him get better and develop that dojo more. Mm-hmm. I really loved that part. And the story was just so addicting. The acting is so good. Everything just drew me in and kept me going. Yeah, it's it's a really, really good show. So it's so cool that you were uh, a fan of the show. And then you got the being the sh- movie with, with the actors. And I want to ask you, who is your favorite character on Cobra Kai? It's really tough. Like, I mentioned Miguel a lot, and that's because I like him a lot as a character mm-hmm. and just how he grows. There's lots of characters who grow like that, but I think he's my favorite, and he's one of the more main characters, and I really like seeing him. Whenever he's on screen, I'm happy. It's just because something about him, his dialogue or something, it's just it's fun. He's just a good character. I'm with so you. So I, I probably say yeah. I'm with you. He's my favorite. Love Miguel. Yeah. So, the big question. In real life, if Callum had to join a dojo, Miyagido, Eagle Fang, or Cobra Kai, which one are you joining? Be careful. I, Martin I, Martin might be upset with your answer. <laughs> Just, you might, you might. <laughs> I mean, I might get a little bit of a beat down at every one. <laughs> but I'm probably going to say I'm going to have to say Cobra Kai. Yeah. Because he, the way that he has them put in the work is really inspiring and I feel like that, that would help me a lot. Even though he's like really mean. <laughs> It can, it would probably inspire me a lot to keep working, keep working harder, you know. So I think that I think that those would be the best one to choose there. Yeah. But that it, that is tough. That is a tough question. Yeah, I uh, Sensei Kreese is is he approves your answer. <laughs> 
So, okay, I do want to play a, a fun little game with you because I know you do impressions, right? Yes. So I want to do a game where I'll name a couple of actors that uh, you could do impressions of, and then you'll give me your best impression of them. Sounds good? Sounds good, yeah. All right. So I'm going to name it and then give me your best impression, okay? All right. I'm excited for I'm especially excited to hear the last two to hear what what your impressions are for those. But we'll we'll we'll, we'll start from the beginning. Arnold Schwarzenegger. All right. Hold on. Hello, Cobra Kai kid. I'm so glad you invited me onto this channel. Thank you so much. Thank you, all Cobra Kai kid viewers. Thank you so much. I love your background. I love your channel. <laughs> I love it. That's great. I didn't expect that. <laughs> now I can like get like, now I'll just use the audio for that and I'll make a post saying Arnold Schwarzenegger loves my content. <laughs> yeah, you should do that. That'd be funny. <laughs> that was really good. All right. Macho man. Ooh, that's a tough one. I got that though. I got to get in that zone. The Cobra Kai kid comes again, and I'm gonna make sure I slam him down again. I don't like his face, and I'm gonna make sure I bash him to the ground. I'm the champion of the WWE. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Jesse Cove. <laughs> all right, all right, hold on. I kind of got to get into that mode. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm a great actor. Like, when I get in the care, I'm just so good. I mean, I'm such a I'm such a nice guy. Look at my pit bulls and my sunglasses. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Last one. Martin Cove. <laughs> All right, bet, bet, bet. Right. I'm excited for this one. <laughs> Super leg. You got a problem with that? No, Sensei. No mercy. No, no mercy. <laughs> yes, yes. It's the it's it's the eyes. It's the sweet. yeah. It's about the eyes. <laughs> oh my god, that was great. <laughs> and then you got to do the the hand the hands on the collar. Yeah. You got a problem with that? <laughs> Perfect. They got to give you the role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm the new Mark Cove. I'm the new John Kreese. <laughs> you could play the young, young John Kreese. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because they already have a young I mean, John Kreese who's like. They, yeah, they do. He's, I think he's like maybe like 20 years old. So you could play the the 12-year-old version of John Kreese. Yeah, 12 <laughs> That was. Might have to bleach your hair, but. <laughs> Well, that was great. Round of applause to you. That was that was awesome for doing all those on the yeah. spot. Great job. Yeah, of course. I, I just love doing impressions and stuff like that. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do, practicing voices. When I was younger, actually, I had this um character I called Rumbles or something. And it was like he was an old guy who was like in the war or something, but he's like really goofy. It was so random, but when I was younger, I just like doing an impression of like this random character I made up. It's like stuff like that, just so fun. Yeah, th those those were really really great impressions. I love it. Thanks. Yeah. How, so how long have you been doing that? How long have you been doing all your impressions? Actually, not too long. I really started like practicing them this year. Like I really just started practicing. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I did a video on that. And, um, what's his name? Um, Macho Man. I've only started learning him, like, a week ago, maybe. I'm not too good with him yet, mm. but, like, I'm getting there. Um, and then Martin Cove, you know, he's just a serious guy who's got the serious voice. So you kind of just got to go there. Oh, man. Jesse Cove, I didn't really, I, I didn't know what I was going to do there, so I kind of just <laughs> went off that. Yeah, it was great. It was great. <laughs> Um, so what would you say is your all-time favorite impression? 
My favorite impression to do is definitely Arnold Schwarzenegger mm. because he's a really popular one, but he's a little harder to learn. But he's like, it's a fun voice to do because it's like, it's more like this, the governor of California, like so <laughs> like that. And it's like a weird accent. But it, that that's what makes it fun, the accent. It's just, um, it's the most fun one to do. Macho Man's a close second. Like, he's also a fun personality to, he's something. <laughs> so good. I love so, it. So, do you have any acting goals or personal goals for yourself going forward? So, I have two main goals. One, I just want to become a great actor who's done a bunch of movies and stuff like that. I want to be able to do a bunch of cool impressions. Like, I'm already learning a few, but I want to be, like, on the spot. I got all these people to do. Uh, people just find that really entertaining, so I like doing that. Um, and my other goal is just to become a director. That's, like, my end goal, like a, mm. a good big director. And I just want to, yeah, I just want to be a good director and just be a big actor. That's really my main goals. Love that. That's great. So if someone else out there wants to get into acting, what advice would you give them? If you really want to get started, I would recommend um, getting someone to take professional pictures for you. And I would start some type of Instagram. I would get someone like someone maybe with their own social medias where they can get professional photos for you, maybe post one on their Instagram or something like that. That helps you get a few followers. And then you start posting and building your own little resume. Um, but what I would really do to like be good at acting is I would just um, study how like big actors act in movies, what their mannerisms are, the stuff they do. The stuff they do to keep it like professional and real. And then I would just start doing little things, kind of work your way up. You know, I'm not a professional, but you know, what I can say is that just put a bunch of work into it to make sure you perfect it. And then just get your way up there and try to get a good agent, try to get auditions and do your best on them. Here's one thing, if you make it that far, and you start getting auditions, I would recommend memorizing the lines, practicing it, getting it perfected like as quick as possible and turn it in. Because um, it's really professional to turn it in like very close after they assign the audition. Mm. Because if you don't, sometimes the agents have already looked at some of the things and they may have already looked, made a decision and it's also just more professional to turn it in before the deadline, which it just helps your chances because you're being more professional. That's really what it's about, being professional and doing all these little things. It helps you a lot. That's very good advice. And I think a lot of people out there, if they're wanting to get into acting, I think that that will really help help, help them out. So, um, you know, you did work on a taste of love. You are con continuing to pursue acting. What has been the biggest lesson that you've learned as an actor so far? The biggest lesson that I've learned is that you got to put in hard work to make it. You got to put in hard work to succeed in what you want to do. Because if you don't, it's not going to go as well for you. If like, think about it like this. In a school assignment, if you don't put as much work into it and you kind of just rush it, you'll probably get like a C or a B. Or if you don't do it, you'll get an F. Mm -hmm. So what you should do is you should just really perfect things and get things done so you stand out. And you have to just work hard for that to happen. So it won't be like, oh, I'm just going to relax today. I'm not going to practice at all. Or not just for one day, maybe for like a week. You'll be like, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything this week. I'm just going to wait for another audition. That's not going to do anything. You got to do something. You got to do maybe a impression or monologue or you know something like I do, like um my YouTube channel. 
something like that to keep you kind of going while you don't have an audition to do. Casting directors will notice that, and it helps more people see your stuff, which helps a lot. It like it helps. It just helps. That's great. And the more you continue to work, get more opportunities, the more you'll learn. And I'm excited to see where your future goes after this big movie, A Taste of Love. I'm so excited for everyone out there watching to see it. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are now having watched this very excited. And I want to thank you so much for joining me, joining me here on the channel and talking about A Taste of Love, talking about Cobra Kai. And once again, congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. I mean, of course I would come on here. It's like my first big interview. And for my first interview, it's actually really fun. I like just sitting down, talking about acting, kind of just answering questions, you know. That's really fun. So, yeah, I hope I do stuff like this again in the future. But, yeah, this is really fun. I'm so glad I could come on your channel. Yeah, that makes me yeah. so happy to hear that you had a good time, that – you enjoyed talking for your first interview and uh, we'll have to, you know, come back and do another discussion. Maybe when the film releases to the public, I'm sure a lot of people will have questions of their own that they'll want to ask you. And hopefully you get on Cobra Kai or something along those sorts. So something. that'd be cool. Yeah. Very cool. Something big like that. Anything would be amazing. Yes, definitely. So for everyone out there, who wants to follow you in your journey, where can they check you out on Instagram, YouTube, or any other social media? Um, so of course I have my YouTube channel, my kid actor on acting, which will be in the description, but I also have my Instagram, which I post what I'm doing. Like sometimes I'll go do things and I'll post it on my Instagram. If I ever get something big, I'll tell you on my Instagram. I post on my real like acting updates on um, my Instagram and it's called Callum Smith info. I think something like that. I can send it. You have it, right? On yeah. And it, it will all be in the description. So if anybody okay. wants to check it out there, you, you could do it. Cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So Thank you everyone so much for watching. Make sure to check out Callum Smith in A Taste of Love when it premieres. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time on Cobra Kai Kid. And until then, remember, Cobra Kai never dies.